everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines episode number two. We are back with our little gang real girl <laughs> and speaking of which, um, after I recorded the first episode, I posted a comment on my channel page asking you to guess what clan I picked and so far almost everyone guessed Bruja. <laughs> I think there's only one person until now that actually guessed Gangrel, so props to you. But everyone else was Gruja or maybe like Toriado or something. So I'm a little bit concerned now that maybe I should have taken the Bruja after all when so many people think it would be a good match for me. <laughs> then again, I was also kind of worried that picking Gangrel was a bit too predictable because it also kind of falls into the tough warrior girl trope I usually go for. But since only one person guessed it correctly, I guess it wasn't that predictable uh, after all. And I mean, I didn't mind the Bruja. I guess I can kind of see why people thought I would pick uh, Bruja because it's also kind of a warrior type character. And admittedly, when I'm playing RPGs, I guess I have the habit to play do-gooders. So I guess it would be like the vampire equivalent for that. But as I uh, explained, the reason why I didn't go for the Bruja is because the description seemed to predefine my character a bit more than I would like. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing such a character, but I usually don't want to make that decision before even starting the game, because I kind of want to see how the game um, progresses and then uh, slowly develop my character. And in case of the Gangreal, I don't know, I feel I have more flexibility here. I think she could be anything from like a really, really nasty bitch to, I don't know, a rogue with a heart of gold and anything in between. Whereas the Bruja, I mean, that was very specific. You are an idealist, you are a rebel, a, f a radical, and you want to build a vampiric utopia. That doesn't give you much leeway how you want to play your character, right? But yeah, um, I picked the Gangrel and I hope I will be happy with my choice. But yeah, um, let's continue. Oh, what the hell? He just vanished. <laughs> um, that was weird. But okay, I guess I don't actually have to do anything else any here anymore. But I want to look around and see if I can interact with any other stuff. I mean, I can apparently. Oh, I can move the chair around. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> I don't know, maybe if I ever need to climb stuff, it would be helpful to move around uh, chairs. Anyway, is there anything else that I can interact with? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, um, in that case, uh, let's uh, open the door. There we go. Oh, there you are. You suddenly disappeared. Ooh. You are much more skilled than uh, you look, to be honest. You've been wounded by the Sabbat. What? How did that happen? This blue bar represents your current level of health. As you sustain regular damage, it will turn black. If your health is completely depleted, you suffer final death and your game is over. Your health regenerates over time. When you are feeding, your health regenerates much faster. Okay. So I can drink more blood to replenish my health. If your health bar begins to turn yellow, it means you have sustained aggravated damage. Certain hazards like fire and supernatural attacks cause aggravated damage. This takes much longer to heal than regular damage. Oh, so I have like two health bars, basically. Okay, um... I guess because he threw the vampire at me, it kind of hurt me a little bit. Well, maybe you should have been more careful about that. 
Oh, this is not like the best best area in town, huh? How did these cars get here? Sorry, I can't help but uh, question that. Anyway, let's go and talk to him again, I suppose. Fucking waste of unlife, these sabbat vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest <laughs> catch, but he'll do. Um, so is there a difference between different blood types? <laughs> I mean, how can his blood not be fresh as long as he's still alive? Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Uh -huh. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Yeah. Ooh, that's good stuff. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I can kind of understand that um, a healthy person would have higher quality blood than a sick person or maybe someone who drinks a lot of alcohol or does drugs or whatever. But apparently intelligence is also um, a reason why blood might be better. Then again, I guess a PhD doesn't necessarily have to be intelligent. I guess there might be other factors at play here. <laughs> but if you say so... Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. Okay, um, so if I do get overzealous, what happens? An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's gonna cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. Okay. Well, I have seen, like, a humanity-like scale in the intro. The beast, what exactly does that mean? And I'm tired of the sermon, I'm going to take a drink. Again, for now I'm going to ask all the questions because I need to learn all these different rules and so on. The beast, it's always there. It's waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. Okay, so... I should make sure not to become too inhuman. So I can't kill anyone, that seems a little restricting. <laughs> yeah, uh, how exactly are these rules uh, made up? I, 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 I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> Okay, so self-defense is okay. I mean, innocent human is a little bit vague. It's not like I can hold a trial on every human before I feed on him, right? So, uh, who knows if that person is quote-unquote innocent. But okay, I think I get it. I can kill in self-defense, but just a random person on the street and not. Got it. The only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. All right. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Um. Feed on the bum at the bottom of the stairs. Okay. Let's see. Ah, okay. It's you. Remember, you want to avoid draining your victims. Draining innocent humans will give you a penalty, penalty to your humanity. To lower your humanity, the closer you get, the lower your humanity, the closer you get to the beast. If your humanity gets too low, you will begin, begin to lose control of your character. This is known as frenzying and may result in a masquerade violation if you are around humans. Okay. Anyway. No human around here. Oh yeah, this one drains fast. But I already have all I need to replenish my health. Bye, sucker! Not quite as good, huh? Eh, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. Worse than a bum snack, that scarf tasted like old gym socks. 
I think I still got some threads between my teeth. <laughs> I mean, how worse can it get, really? Well, give it a try. All right, I'll do it. I'm going to eat rats. I don't care. Rats can be fed upon to gain a single blood point. You will find some rats at the other end of the alley near the yellow windows. Killing rats has no impact on your humanity score. Humans do not react well when they see live rats being sucked. <laughs> okay, so I still have to do it in, like, private. Um, yellow windows, you say? Oh! Oh, I see! Um... Okay. Uh, okay. Need to be close enough in order to actually grab the rat. There we go. Tasty, tasty rats. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really need it. I'm already full in health and blood. But honestly, I don't think she minds. I mean, she is a bit feral anyway, so she probably doesn't mind eating rats. <laughs> you rat sucker! <laughs> hey, I don't care what you do, but just so you know, polite vampire society looks down on that kind of thing. Well, yeah, I don't think she cares about polite vampire society. They can be polite and pass me the sword for my rat. <laughs> yep. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Okay, uh, what do you mean? Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. Ooh, sneak. Um, and where to? The building across from us with the garage door. There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. Okay, I will try. Alright, go. I'm already gone. Sneaking, a combination of dexterity and stealth, is a feat that allows you to move around your victims and enemies without being detected. You must crouch to sneak. You can crouch by pressing the crouch key. The meter on the left indicates the proximity of your enemies and their chance of detecting you if they are looking your way. Green means you are completely safe, yellow means you might be seen, and red means they will see you if they look in your direction. <laughs> An enemy's chance of detecting you is directly tied to your sneaking feet. If you are detected, your enemies will often say as much and come to you will often say as much and come to investigate. I mean I my sneaking feet is not very good, so I need to be careful I suppose. Anyway, there we go. I can crouch. Um Looks a bit weird when she's crouching, but okay. Um. Oh, I can apparently open this one now. All right. So, where exactly do I have to go? By the way, does does this game have something similar to a map? Info sheet. Okay, yeah, here's my humanity. Um, and I guess I need to be extra careful because I can frenzy easier than other vampires. Okay, but that doesn't seem to be a map. Alright. Oh, okay, I see... I see someone over here. I'm just supposed to sneak past... This guy? It's kinda hard to figure out what his line of sight is. <laughs> I mean, my indicator is green, so... I guess I'm fine? Alright. Now I need to be a bit more careful here. Yeah? He's like walking... Back and forth, apparently. Nope. <laughs> hmm. I mean, as long as he's standing there, he doesn't seem to be much of a problem. But... 
kind of hard to predict what he's going to do. Let's just give it a try. All right, this is a party ready to go. Oh, keep it quiet. They're inside here. Seems that shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry. He's probably greener than you. Okay. Um, that's pretty green. <laughs> yeah, considering that I've been a vampire for maybe an hour. Um, but yeah, what makes you think that? The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. <laughs> Okay, how can that be? Uh, he's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that, make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. Okay, so how would I do that? I mean, if he's a vampire, I can't um, feed on him, I suppose. I'll do my best, sounds good. I've got a little frustration I need to work out. Probably. He is a vampire, so be ready. Um, I was born ready. I'll keep that in mind, see <laughs> She probably is the kind of loudmouth who would think that she's already ready to do this. Go get him. Of course, I have no idea, but I hope the tutorial will tell me. Okay, here we go. To engage in unarmed combat, you need to equip your fists and then attack. To equip your fists, press the melee weapons key, default F1, until your fists icon is highlighted in your melee weapon inventory list, and then click the mouse the left mouse button. Pressing the attack key, default left key, initiates your attack. Your unarmed combat feat is a combination of strength and brawl. It directly affects your success in unarmed combat. There are different attacks depending on what direction you are moving when you initiate your attack. Try different combinations of moving and attacking in the upcoming battle. You can also block your enemy's attacks by pressing the hold by pressing and holding the attack mode key, default tap. To put your fists away, <laughs> press the holster weapon key, default H. Okay. Um. I guess you want me to go through here again, but that's that's where I just came from. All right. Whatever. Oh, now we're going to punch the guy that we just try to avoid. Um, I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt to attack from behind, maybe. So maybe I will try to sneak up from, from behind. Not that I'm very good at sneaking, but I'm good at punching, so hopefully, even if he sees me, I can just overwhelm him by punching him. Oh, you can apparently sneak up on them and just choke them out, like like an assassin. I like this. Ooh, tire iron. Ah, you have just picked up a tire iron. To equip this weapon, press the melee weapons key, default F1, until the tire iron icon is highlighted in your melee weapon inventory list, and then click the left mouse button. Okay. This icon indicates the weapon you uh, you currently have equipped. For ranged weapons, there are a number indicating your current reserve of ammunition. Later on in the game, you will find armor to protect yourself. Equip it in the same way as the weapons by pressing the armor key, default F3, until the armor is highlighted and then clicking the left mouse button. Okay. Now, yeah, here we go. I have a tire iron now. I'll take it. Also, is this like anything special here? Not really. Can I look at any of this stuff? Nope. Um, I guess I can't stop crouching now. Huh? That's that. Sounds like we got another pack moving in though. The Saban are going all out. You better head underground, avoid straight bullets. All right, sounds like a good strategy. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. See ya. Okay. Um. So, head downstairs and through the building. Okay, maybe I should be crouching again after all. Is it through here? 
Probably. Okay, this is not a door. Let's do it. Um, and right, I'm supposed to keep my tire iron handy. <laughs> oh dear, what is this place? Um. Oh, okay. I can open this apparently. Uh, can I just drop down here without taking like damage? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure fall damage is a thing in this game. I mean, I'm a vampire. I feel I shouldn't be taking damage from a little drop, right? Um. Let's open this door. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he's not looking my way, so I guess this is my chance. When you are in a position to perform a stealth kill, you will see this icon. Okay, I already figured that out by accident. Stealth skills have the advantage of being silent. To perform a stealth kill, equip your fists or a melee weapon, crouch and sneak up behind your victim until you see the stealth kill icon, then press use key default E. And when you are on higher stealth levels, the attack key default left click. Okay. Do it. Nice. Not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them hold up. The more the merrier. Great, just my luck. Ah, oh, I can handle it. Alright. Um there's like a door behind this crate. I'm not sure if I can get to that door though. It doesn't look like it. Anyway, can I like check the environment? Like the crate? No. The crate is barely physical. <laughs> Anyway, let's continue. Disciplines are your vampiric powers. This icon indicates the discipline you currently have selected. There are two kinds of disciplines, passive and targeted. Passive disciplines directly affect you and targeted disciplines directly affect your enemies. Okay, that makes sense. All disciplines cost a certain amount of blood from your blood pool to activate. Blood buff is another ability common to all vampires. Scroll the mouse wheel to select blood buff and use the power key default right click to activate it. Blood buff gives you a temporary bonus to all your physical attributes. It is useful in a variety of situations like picking a lock that would otherwise be too difficult. Note in Elysium areas you can use blood buff while picking a lock only. Okay. Ah, I see. So I can't, can't pick this one normally because I need um, higher lock picking skill. But I can use my blood buff to increase my skill. Okay. Do I need to do it more? Okay. Now I can open it. Gangrel have three unique disciplines. Animalism, the supernatural control of nature. Fortitude, preternatural toughness and constitution. Protean, the manifestation of different bestial abilities and forms. Okay. Fortitude is a passive discipline. It is also time-based. Once activated, pay attention to the discipline timer on the bottom right of your screen. Use a fortitude Use of fortitude is not a masquerade violation. There is a Sabbat guard up ahead. Use fortitude to armor yourself and kill him. Scroll the mouse wheel to select fortitude and use the power key default right click to activate it. 
Fortitude is most effective when used with another weapon. After activating the discipline, equip your tire iron and attack him. Well, I have my tire iron equipped. Okay. Fortitude. And now I can just punch him. <laughs> well, he's still alive, but not anymore. All right. Did I do good? I cannot talk during combat. Oh, do we have more um, enemies around? Or is it just because I was still using my skill? I think they're clearing out. There's no need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. We'll come to an elevator around the way. Okay. Meet you there. Don't let him catch you. No problem. If I'm not there in ten minutes, call the president. <laughs> uh, I kind of like her uh, lame attempts at humor. All right. Now let's continue. Protean is the vampiric power of manifesting, manifesting different bestial abilities and forms. Protean is a passive discipline. Once you activate it, pay attention to the discipline timer on the bottom right of your screen. Use of Protean is a masquerade violation if you are seen using it in a non-combat area. There's a guard up ahead. Use Protean to kill him. You have level 1 Protean known as Gleam of Red Eyes. Scroll the mouse wheel to select it and use the power key default right click to activate the discipline. You will immediately gain heat vision and a bonus to wits. Equip your fists and kill the guard. Okay, um, fists are equipped. Let's activate Protean. And let's take care of the guard. There we go. That wasn't too difficult. Do we have other guys around here? Yep. Animalism is the mystical vampiric power that controls nature. Animalism is a targeted discipline. The effect and the length varies with each level. Use of animalism is a mass grade violation if you are seen activating it. There's a guard up ahead. Use animalism to incapacitate him and pass by. You have level 1 animalism known as Night Wisp Ravens. Scroll the mouse wheel to select Night Wisp Ravens, place your cursor over the guard and use the power key to activate the discipline. The guard will be distracted by a flock of mystical ravens. You can walk past him into the next room. Okay. Okay, my previous power has vanished. And now I have to choose Night Wisp Ravens. Um, okay, I guess this over here is the door I'm supposed to go to. Well, no valid target found. Okay, I kind of have to target him properly. There we go. When you can pick up an object and throw it, you will see this use icon. To pick up an object, press the use key, default E. To throw it, press the attack key, default left click. Thrown objects make noise and can be used to distract your enemies. Okay. There's a Sabbat vampire up ahead guarding the exit. Crouch, find an object that you can pick up and throw it away from the guard to distract him. Once he's away from the exit, sneak through the room and leave. Okay, um... Let's see... I guess this is stuff I can... pick up. Yep. Ooh! Are you coming my way? 
I mean, this is clearly a situation where first person would be more useful. All right, let's huh? road in that general direction. And while you're going there, I will go to the door. There we go. Ah. <laughs> Fucking humans. Gangbangers protecting their turf. Ah, oh, man. I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals about to take one for the hood. Okay, so what do we do about it? Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots and it'll take down a human. Okay, so attacking these humans would be fine. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die <sighs> and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy. Practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's got to keep up with the times. Hmm. And in modern-day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. So, it doesn't work against vampires, you say? Well, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. So, they can hurt me, but they probably won't kill me. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. All right. You have been given a 38 revolver. To equip it, press the range weapon key default F2 until the revolver icon is highlighted and then left click. To fire, press the attack key. Some weapons, but not the 38, have an alternate firing mode, such as automatic fire. Press the attack mode key to toggle it. Range combat, a combination of perception and firearms, is a feat that affects how well you shoot a gun. <laughs> when you equip a gun, you will see the range combat cursor. Its spread and the speed at which it focuses is a direct result of the value of your range combat feat. There are some bottles on a crate at the end of the hall. Aim your cursor, wait for it to fully focus and use the attack key to fire the gun. All right. But first of all, let me grab this delicious rat over here. Oh, there's a bottle on the crate at the end of a hall. Okay, they want me to finish this tutorial first, apparently. Okay, I have a gun equipped. And now I'm going to shoot the bottles. All right. Well, not the best shot. Maybe I'm just going to remove the stupid bottle. There we go. <laughs> Don't want to waste all my my ammo here. And now let me grab this rat over here. There we go. <laughs> um. Oh, hang on a second. What is this? Oh, there's, there's more ammo here. <laughs> That's good to know. Anyway, um, let's talk again. Come on up. I'll meet you. Okay, so apparently I can just move on. Right. Um, oh, hang on a second. A new rat has appeared. And I will take it. Um... Okay, we got an elevator and a door. But it doesn't look like I can open the door. Nope. So the elevator it is. Um Okay, there's only one option apparently. There we go. Um, now, let's see what we're dealing with here. Oh, okay, there's, there's a guy standing over here. I wonder if I can shoot him through, 
Uh, the crates over here. Um, guess I gotta try. Oh, there's another one on the far side of this place. I mean, I can try to distract them with one of my nice skills. They don't seem to be moving at all, so... There's not much I can do about that, I suppose. Motherfucker. Help! <laughs> Let's try to shoot him now. Okay, that worked. Um, got a baseball bat. Is a baseball bat better than a tire iron? Is there any way for me to find out? It doesn't really tell me much. Does it tell me much about it in... Okay, here we go. Damage potential 14. Um, yeah, I guess the baseball bat is a bit better. I guess I'm going to use the baseball bat from now on. Now. Let's see what we can do about this guy over here. Oh, oh, well, he apparently already noticed me. Well, I'm not convinced about my gangrel shooting skills here, but okay, apparently we finished them off anyway. Combat is not the only solution for sticky situations. You can also use your feet and disciplines in dialogue. When you are able to do this, your response will show up in the different colors. And when using higher resolutions, different fonts that are indicated below. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can see the different fonts. Um, this indicates a persuasion response. This indicates a seduction response. This indicates an intimidation response. Okay, blue persuasion, pink seduction, green intimidation. That's a weird choice of color for intimidation, but okay. Um, anyway, I think... I think we're good here. Let me switch back to my fists. That's it, kiddo. Just like that, it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. Okay, um, it's over? Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Harry Dodge spinning all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, it's already getting a headache. It certainly is. Well, to be honest, you came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabbat. Well, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred had stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. <laughs> hmm, you're losing me here, Jack. Yeah, I'm not sure if I follow. Uh, I think they're looking for you outside. Great. Guess you've got a cab to catch. Was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but... Ah, hell, you'll figure it all out. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Good luck. Well, uh, presumably gangrels are not interested in politics, but I guess I gotta learn it anyway. You have received two experience points. By pressing the character editor key, you can access your character sheet and spend your experience points where you see fit. Unspent experience points will stay in your available experience pool. Okay. Let's do it. Um, there we go. Experience points. 
but I may want to have a closer look at this later. So maybe I'm going to uh, leave this for now. I mean, I kind of want to have a character that is decently balanced. So I don't want to... Oh, I see. I need a specific amount of experience points to level up certain skills or disciplines and at the moment it doesn't look I can actually get anything because the minimum cost is like three so I have to wait until I get more okay never mind your haven Prince Lacroix has arranged for you to use a Camarilla safe house in Santa Monica as your haven okay um well, this is not exactly my definition of haven. This is a really, really crappy apartment. Ooh, but look at this um, laptop over here. <laughs> Compared to that old CRT monitor we've seen earlier, this is high tech. This is like really, really high tech. Lacuna coil. Whoa, this takes me back. <laughs> I think this is... Is this a cover of, um, uh, what was that album called? Coma Lies? Yeah, that, that takes me back a long time to my teenage days as a half as goth. <laughs> then again, this might have been a little bit later. I don't, I don't quite remember, but I think this may have been released sometime in the early 2000s, so I would already have been in university at that point, I think. I actually wonder if I have that album. I'm currently looking at my CD rack, but of course I can't can't see it from here, the titles. I definitely have it on my computer as MP3. And if this was released like in the early 2000s, I probably don't have the actual CD because I was a poor student and the early 2000s were the prime Napster days. <laughs> so there was like a time where I really downloaded most of my music. There's like a gap in my CD collection. I have a bunch of CDs from like the 90s and then there's like a large gap in the early 2000s and then later I started buying CDs again when I had like an actual job and earned money. <laughs> so um, I still buy CDs for what it's worth because I'm a 90s kid and I just like to have like the physical CD. But yeah, um, I remember this being a pretty decent album. But yeah, let's look around a little bit. We have some stuff we can interact with here. Um, what is this? Hey, the password for the computer is Sunrise. Keep the cash in the drawer. It's yours. I dropped you an email with my address. Come on, uh, come on over after you get settled. Mercurio. Okay. You dropped me some money, you say? Ooh, $100. I take it. Okay, we can use a computer can use the TV and we can pick up the watch. Got a pill bottle. Guess I'll take this as well. Can I do anything with any of these? Normal watch. This is a replica of a much nicer watch. <laughs> so it's a fake. Estrogen. Caution. Do not take if male. Okay. Well, I, I'm not male. I can take it. But is there a reason why I would want to? Hello, LA. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to <laughs> The Dead of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and leave first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who will be the lucky caller? You've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh, Vigo. Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working a late shift here Ooh. at the uh, yacht club. Uh-huh. A pack of blood How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is, uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, 
Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci. Yes. <laughs> Caller two, you're on. The double I think we're going to maybe listen to this later. There seems to be rather extensive stuff we can listen to. Watching your heads. Found by a jogger early on Tuesday morning who says he smelled it a mile away, the mystery creature is thought to be some form of giant octopus. <laughs> Though marine biologists that have examined the monster have commented that they have never seen anything like it in the cephalopod family before. They speculate that it could be from a yet undiscovered family of sea creatures. A massive gelatinous creature that washed up on the beaches of Providence, Rhode Island, has scientists scratching their heads. Found by a jogger early on Tuesday morning who says he smelled it a mile away, the mystery creature is thought to be some form of giant... Okay, but I, this is just marine. repeating. Um, anyway, there is a lot of stuff we can do here, like look at the computer, maybe listen to the radio in greater detail, but the episode is getting kind of long. So I guess I'm going to make a cut here, and we will um, explore this place a little bit more in the next episode. So until then, as always, thank you for watching. And see you again next time.